Allegro after the coda. One and two and two and two and ready and two and here we go. Hi, and welcome to the tutorial section for Amethyst by H.A. Vandercook. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you things that I'm doing with the piece that make it hopefully easier for you to play and also sound better. Now, understand I will not be spending time talking about dynamics or articulations. Vandercook does an excellent job of notating exactly how he wants you to play those. I'm going to be spending most of my time talking about different positions and articulations that I do with those positions in order to make the piece easier to play. Before we get going, please understand that if I talk about the first and second measures of the andante, I'm talking about the first and second measures of the trombone part, not of the movement. So I'm ignoring those rests that are at the beginning of each section. So when I say measures, the first and second measure, that's actually maybe measure nine and 10 because we skipped those rests, but it's really the first and second measure of the trombone part. So why don't we get started? For every example that I include here in the tutorial, I'll be doing two recordings. We're talking about alternate positions, so I'd like you to understand how and why I'm using them. So the first recording will actually be the way that you're used to playing the piece. So if you see an F and you're used to playing it in first position, I will demonstrate that section in first position. If I prefer it in sixth position, like we'll talk about in just a second, um, then I will explain why, and then I will show you an example of using that, of playing that section with the F in sixth position. These are going to be very short videos, so please, if there's a section that you don't understand or you want to watch a few times, it's only going to be four or five seconds, so you'll be able to watch it as many times as you want. Let's get started with the first four measures of the Andante. I play this as written, but I prefer in the second measure to play the F in sixth position instead of first. The reason is I have a slur and a decrescendo coming down from the G in fourth position. By going to sixth, I can just let my air slow down a tiny bit, move my slide quickly and do a da sound, and that F will come out very smoothly. If I bring it into first, there's a chance that I may have a crack or that I may uh, articulate the F a little bit too hard. Here is what it looks like with the F in first position. <laughs> And now here it is with the F in sixth position. Please notice that it's a smoother sound. In the fifth and sixth measures of the Andante, there is a D that I like to play in fourth position instead of first. This is the second note of measure five. The reason I like to do that is because it is surrounded by third position E's. So it's easier to go 3-4-3 three, three than it is to try and do 3-1-3. Three, three. Here are measures 5 and 6 of the Andante trombone part with that D the way you may be used to playing it in first position. <laughs> And now here it is with the D in fourth position. Notice how I'm able to play this by just moving my wrist instead of having to move my whole arm. In the 
In the 11th and 12th measures of the Andante, at the end of the 11th measure is a high D. I like to play that D in fourth position instead of first, so that I get a crisper articulation of the C in third position that follows it. There's no gliss there, and I don't even have to tongue the C if I don't want to. Here are those two measures with the D the way you may be used to playing it in first position. <laughs> And now, here it is the way I like to play it, with that D in fourth position. Please notice how much crisper the C sounds following the D. In the 15th and 16th measures of the Andante, the 15th measures begins with a C, D, C. I like to play that D in fourth position. Why? Because it's surrounded by third position C's. So that way I can play 3-4-3 three, three, instead of playing 3-1-3. Three, three. Here it is, though, played with that D in first position. And now here's the way I prefer to play it with the D in fourth position. The moderato is a variation of the andante that we just played. The difference is the andante was like a waltz in 3-4, and the moderato is more of a march in 2-4. So a lot of the things that we talk about here are basically repeats from what we talked about in the andante. In the first and second measures of the moderato, we have a couple of notes that we're playing in different positions. I like to play that B-flat in fifth position, and then the F later in sixth position. The reason that I like the B flat in fifth is because it's following a C and then it's coming up to a G. And it's just easier to play all of those notes by putting that B flat in fifth. We play the F in sixth for the same reason that we played that first F in sixth in the Andante, is that we have a decrescendo coming down from a G and it's just smoother. Here are the first two measures of the moderato with the regular positions or the positions that you're probably used to playing. And now, here they are with that B-flat in 5th position and the F in 6th position. In the 5th measure of the moderato, I like to play those Ds in 4th position instead of 1st. First of all, just like in the Andante with this section, the first D is surrounded by third position E flats, so it's easier to go 3-4-3 three, three than 3-1-3. Three, three. The second D is followed by a B natural that's in fourth position anyway, so I might as well go to fourth position and then slow my air down a tiny bit in order to go from the D to the B. Before we see that, here is what it looks like with all of those notes in their original positions. And now, here it is with the Ds in fourth. Look how little my arm is working, and I'm able to play all of these notes just by flicking my wrist a tiny bit between third and fourth positions. In the 14th measure, I'm playing the B-flat in 5th position, and in the 15th measure, I'm playing the F in 6th position. I will play the B-flat in that 15th measure in our normal 1st position. The reasons are the exact same reasons that I did this back in the Andante. It just makes for an easier flow of the notes. I'll go into more detail on this near the end of the video. For now, here is measures 14 through 16 of the moderato with the positions that you're used to playing. And now here are measures 14 through 16 with the alternates that we talked about. The first B flat in fifth position, the low F at the beginning of measure 15 in sixth position, followed by that B flat afterwards back in first position. Please notice how easy and flowing I'm able to make this part of the piece without having my arm work way too hard. The trio is called trio because it's the third section of the piece. 
Here are the first two measures. I like to play the D in fourth position instead of first because it's surrounded by a third position E flat and a third position C, so it's much easier to play it that way. Here are the first two measures with the way that you might normally play it, that D being in first position. <laughs> Hopefully you're getting an idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Here are the first two measures of the trio with the D in fourth position. In measure five, the F appears three times. The first two times I play it in first position because it's followed or surrounded by an E in second position, so it's much easier there. But I like to play that last F in sixth position so that I can make one arm motion of the ascending or going up notes, F, G, A, B flat. Here are the fifth and sixth measures of the trio with all of the Fs in first position. And now here it is again with the first two Fs in first position and that last F in sixth position. Hopefully you'll be able to see that I'm just working my way up the slide and it makes this part of the piece a little bit easier to play. In measure 13, there's an F dotted eighth note that I play in first position. Then after the 16th note, I have a D 16th note and an F 16th note. I like to play those in fourth position instead of first because they're followed by a couple of notes in third position. I'd like to show you how this is played with the notes in their regular positions. This is measures 13 and 14. And now, here are measures 13 and 14 with the notes in the first F in first position and that second D and F in fourth position. Notice how smooth the slide work is here when I do that. In measure 15, I'm playing the first F in sixth position and the last note, the D in fourth position. The reason is I like to make a smooth line. It's an ascending line, F, G, A, B flat. So I'll just go six, four, two, one. And then I have a C in third and I just keep going out into the D in fourth position instead of forcing myself back to first position for that D. This is what measures 15 and 16 look like when I use the original positions. <laughs> Well, hopefully that explanation wasn't too confusing. Here are measures 15 and 16 with the alternate positions that I like to use, the F in sixth position at the beginning of 15 and the D at the end of 15 in fourth position. Hopefully you'll see that this is a little bit easier to play. There's only one recording here that I'm going to show you of the cadenza. Uh, it's, cadenza means you can play this at any tempo that you want. So I will be doing this a little bit slower than I did in the original performance at the beginning of this video. I'm starting with that F in sixth position. Uh, and then all of the rest of the notes are in their normal positions. I do like to play the high D in fourth position, though. Here is the cadenza. <laughs> For the coda, I'm just recording one video for you, and there's something that I'd like you to understand. I'm playing the D 8th notes in 1st position, but the D 16th notes in 4th position. The reason is the 8th note Ds are followed by a B flat in 1st position and an F in 1st position, so it's easier just to stay in 1st. But the D 16th notes are approached by a C in third position and they lead to an E flat in third position. So it's easier to go three, four, three than it is three, one, three. With one recording, let me show you what I'm talking about with the D eighth notes in first position and the D 16th notes in fourth position. <laughs> I'd like to take a closer look 
at a couple of measures in this piece and go into a little bit more detail. So this may be more for the teachers, but if you're a student and you'd really like to fully understand what I'm doing, of course, continue watching. The first one is measure 15 of the moderato. I am playing the F in sixth position so that I have F, G, A, B flat being six, four, two, one, one slide motion, instead of the F in first position, which would be one, then I have to snap out to fourth position and then work my way to two and one for the A and the B flat. So it is much easier and smoother if I play this six, four, two, one. Here it is one more time. <laughs> Let's take a really close look at the trio and then look at the 13th measure where we have those four 16th notes, a D, an F, an E flat, and a C. I told you before it's just two notes in fourth position and two notes in third position. But if you really want to be crazy specific about this and play all of those notes not only correctly but really in tune, you're going to move the slide up gently just a tiny bit for each one of those notes. The D is actually played a slightly flat fourth position, so you have your slide add a little bit more. The F, however, is a slightly sharp fourth position, so we're going to pull the slide up a tiny bit. We're followed by an E flat, which is a slightly flat third position, and then a C, which is a slightly sharp third position. So even though I'm going four, four, three, three with my slide, it's actually four, four, three, three. I move the slide up just a tiny bit for each one of those notes. This is what it looks like. <laughs> There are many parts of this video where I'm asking you to play sixth position notes, usually sixth position Fs and fifth position B flats. Some of your arms may not be long enough to do that. If that's the case, use your extend a bone that you can put right onto your slide and you will find that that makes those notes much easier to play. This is an example of the beginning of the piece using the extend a bone. Well, that was an awful lot of information that I gave out in a relatively short amount of time. I hope that if there's any questions that you have and you want to watch part of this again, that you just review it over and over again until you start to understand it. If you have any questions about anything we talked about in this video or any comments, please don't even think twice. Send me an email at thetromboneplace at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Well, that was an awful lot of information that I gave out in a burp. I'm going to try that again. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, excuse me. Well, that was an awful lot of information that I gave out in a relatively short amount of time.